Hi everyone, welcome to this year's uh, Azure Bootcamp, which is a special event uh, as of today. Um, this is a, an online Azure Bootcamp. Um, my session is about the Microsoft Bot Framework from zero to hero. Short introduction, um, who am I? My name is Stefan. Uh, I'm a technical lead at a company called Solvion, based in Graz, Austria. I run a blog, which you can visit at uh, www.cloudguy.pro uh, or you can find me on Twitter uh, with my handle cloudguy underscore pro. Uh, currently I'm a Microsoft MVP for artificial intelligence and I'm uh, a co-organizer of a lot of events based in Austria. I'm doing an AI boot camp in Vienna. We're doing Chevron Saturday in Vienna. Um, we're doing uh, Office 365 meetups in Graz and in Vienna and a lot of more stuff. Uh, to come in the future um, but that was about me so uh, I'll guess you, know, you guys wanna wanna uh, get started with the with the session and learn something about the Microsoft bot framework so what am I going to talk about today first of all I'd like to introduce you to bots what are bots uh, what you, what can you do with bots and so forth uh, next up we'll hear something about the Microsoft bot framework in version 4 uh, then I'm going to talk about the typical dev lifecycle of a bot project, which you will run uh, through at a later stage if you're deciding to build bots with the bot framework. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the templates and solutions out there provided by Microsoft and by the community. Then I'm going to talk about a bit uh, about the cognitive services. What are cognitive services? How can you use them? How do, they, how do they interact with bots? And the last thing I'm going to show you is a quick demo um, so to give you an idea on how easy it is to get started with the Microsoft Bot Framework and the Azure Bot Service. But first, let's talk about bots in general. So what are bots? Bots are nothing more than a computer program designed to have a conversation with a human being, especially over the internet, of course, um, and they're based on three uh, main areas, so to speak. So the first area is uh, written text, so it's like um, a conversation you have with a colleague over Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or whatever. The second one could be via images, exchanging images or, or rich uh, media, and the third area would be the speech area where you communicate with a bot via natural speech and uh, the bot actually understands your voice and is capable of, of uh, speaking himself or herself. Um, these are the three, three main areas. Typically uh, a bot is one thing, it's an app that performs an automated task uh, and the main goal is to solve the user's needs in the quickest and easiest way compared to any other option possible um, and the thing I would uh, I like to compare it with is like uh, think about you have an internet solution right now uh, and within your internet you have various areas where users could store documents so if a user needs a specific document um, and he wants to find that uh, imagine here what what well, which steps uh, the user has to take. First of all, the user has to log in to your internet. Then the user has to navigate to the site um, where the where the uh, file location could be. If the user doesn't find the file immediately, the user has to search for it. If the search brings up a lot of results, the user has to filter the search and so forth until the user actually finds the document. The, he searches for. Imagine um, the user would uh, take that exact same process and um, do it with a bot. Basically, this is, our, this is a two-step approach. User uh, actually goes to the location where the bot is deployed. Could be Microsoft Teams, could be Skype, could be Facebook, whatever. And then the user just um, enters a message telling the bot, hey, I need a document XYZ, uh, please search for it. And the bot then does the rest and searches for the actual document and brings up the document in the chat window. So um, this is like a 
an improvement compared to the process before where the user had to take five or six steps in order to gain set the same results. So this is the main idea behind bots, to make something better, improve something, make it faster, more interactive, whatever, instead of making it worse. Because you shouldn't be uh, building bots because it's cool right now or something else. You should be building bots because you want to improve something. You may want to make something better uh, and not more complicated or any any other worse thing. So actually an x-ray of a typical bot would look like that. So as I said, it's just an app. It's a web app in, the, in most cases. It has a REST endpoint, which is uh, publicly, publicly available. Um, it utilizes some SDKs, like in our case in the Microsoft ecosystem. This will be the Bot Builder SDK. Um, you have like intelligent tools to make your bot actually intelligent, um, which, which are in the Microsoft world called Cognitive Services, which we'll hear later on. And you have a lot of platform services where you can host your bot on. And of course, your bot should be canvas aware. So it should be able to run in various channels like Skype, Teams, Facebook, Slack, Cortana, whatever. Uh, and you utilize um, the native uh, integrations of those channels as well. So what is actually the Microsoft Bot Framework? Um, as any other uh, cloud vendor, Microsoft has also come up with a framework for building bots. And it's actually pretty cool. If you look at the numbers, um, these are a bit older. So it might be um, that those numbers are, are, are increasing uh, as of today. So um, back a couple of months ago, they had like 10 million uh, plus messages per day. Uh, they had more than 1 million unique users per day using the Microsoft Bot Framework. They had a, a whole lot of developers um, developing bots with the Microsoft Bot Framework. Uh, and what, what I think is even cooler, that more than 1,000 companies actually use the Microsoft Bot Framework in a production use case. So this is pretty cool. If you look at the, uh, at the timeline, the Microsoft Bot Framework has first being uh, announced which was about two years ago or or two and a half years ago so it's pretty cool that companies actually use the microsoft bot framework and prod production use cases um, nowadays uh, and and uh, speaks for itself that the product or, or the framework is pretty cool and pretty decent and you can build pretty pretty cool stuff with it um, and it's uh, compared to to like a couple of years ago where Microsoft was like not that open source as it is now. Um, the bot framework itself is open source. So you can find all the code on GitHub. Um, they have uh, more than 10 public repos um, for version 3 and version 4. Um, for v3 they have C sharp and JavaScript repos uh, for the SDK. For version 4 they have C sharp, JavaScript, Python and Java. Um, so you can actually build bots with any of these uh, programming languages. They have a lot of CLI tools out there for going through the whole uh, development stack, um, authoring dialogues, mocking conversations, uh, creating the, uh, the transcript files and so on. Um, they have a pop, uh, an open source emulator which, which you can use for uh, debugging bots locally on your machine. Um, the web chat control uh, is open source, so you can customize the web chat control to fit your needs. They have a lot of documentation out there and uh, they have a lot of samples out there for all the pro programming languages. So if you're rather new to the bot framework uh, and the bot builder SDKs, then you can hit just github.com uh, slash bot builder minus samples. Um, and there you'll find uh, more than 60 samples which are out there ranging from uh, echo bot or basic bot to an even more sophisticated one using language understanding uh, app insights and so on so if you don't have that much of an idea what the Microsoft bot framework is and how you can get started just go to uh, github.com uh, slash bot builder minus samples um, fork the repo or clone the repo and just run through the samples and get an idea on how to build bots. So 
Uh, as I said, Microsoft Pod Framework uh, is out there in version 3 and version 4. Um, version 4 is the, the, the newest version and is the actual version um, we, we will be using in, in, in the demo today as well. Um, the version 4 has changed a lot compared to version 3, so they have introduced a lot of new stuff in version 4. Um, they have uh, G8, uh, C Sharp and JavaScript. Uh, C Sharp supports .NET Core um, and they have also preview SDKs for Python and Java so you can also build your bot uh, completely in Python or completely in Java, Java or with JavaScript in TypeScript whatever um, so you're not, not narrowed down to .NET anymore so you can build your bot in uh, which programming language you want to use um, they have a lot of um, they have incorporated a lot of learnings from version 3 so they have uh, improved a lot of things in the SDK right now it's open it's a modular and what I like best it's an extensible architecture so you can extend it to your needs um, they have introduced a lot of uh, services and systems uh, or concepts um, where you can extend the SDK to fit your needs uh, and to, to build even even better bots the, the dialog system itself is more agile and more customizable compared to version 3. So you can build more uh, sophisticated dialog trees with version 4. Um, they share the same implementation across all the uh, programming languages. So no matter if you're building a C Sharp bot or a JavaScript bot, the basic principles are always the same. So that's pretty cool. You don't have to rethink if you're building a C-sharp bot today and tomorrow you're building a JavaScript bot. You don't have to rethink about, oh, how is this going to be uh, built in JavaScript and so on. So basically the principles are the same and the ideas are the same. Um, the visual controls are pretty rich. So you can work with cards, you can work with buttons, you can work with images, videos and what's 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 cool about it you can work with adaptive cards which is a um a cool thing to work with uh with bots um it seamlessly integrates with azure and with the cognitive services so basically it's just a plug and play system for cognitive services you plug in your cognitive services and they're uh, straight to use right away uh, it supports oauth so you can work with modern authentication services um, the tool chain itself is rather, uh, rather cool for building and uh, deploying bots and as I said it's open source and it's a rich ecosystem and you, get, you have a, a lot of a, a big community out there which supports you um, so that's pretty cool. So the Microsoft Bot Framework itself if you want to uh, think about it it consists of three areas. The first one are the users. This is the area you um, you can't touch as I like to say so you can't control what your users are doing. The second area are the channels so those are the touch points for your users so as you can see here you got the Microsoft channels like Teams, like Skype, Cortana, whatever but you can also integrate with third-party channels like Slack, like uh, Kick, Twilio for SMS sending, Facebook Messenger, Telegram and if that's not enough you can just build your own uh, channel and add it to your to your bot um, with direct line so you can easily um, integrate any other channel as well which is not natively supported by the Azure bot service um, so that's pretty cool and the third air, uh, area is basically your conversational AI platform uh, so it's consisting uh, of a hosting platform which could be Microsoft Azure, it could be your on-premises data center or it could be any other cloud services provider as well. Uh, next up you have your bot service types, uh, you have your web app bot, uh, in version 3 you also had your functions bot so you could build bots with the Azure functions uh, services. Um, this is not available in, in version 4 yet. I hope it will come uh, in version 4 too soon as well because this is pretty cool um, to go serverless with your bots. Um, 
And if you're hosting your bot somewhere else, you can make use of the bot channel registration service where you actually just register your uh, application where your, your bot is uh, hosted on with the Azure bot service and then you can just uh, integrate your channels there as well and your bot could be hosted on-prem or at any other data center as well. Um, then you have the various SDKs as I said for .NET which supports .NET Core um, for JavaScript well, for Python and Java which is in preview so you can choose whichever you like um, then you got a lot of concepts and patterns out there um, coming from Microsoft for example handling state you can build your own state management service or you can use the the one provided by Microsoft um, there's a concept called middleware which we'll see later on as well um, you can work with dialogues you can integrate cards and stuff like that and uh, looking at the first four um, areas within the conversational AI platform this is basically nothing more than just uh, building a, a web app so there's no intelligence uh, integrated in there the intelligence comes with the cognitive services actually um, which are capable of um, dealing with various uh, input types like vision speech uh, you can use it for searching you can use it for knowledge management and stuff like that so the cognitive services are basically the heart of your bot because they make your bot actually intelligent. So if you don't use them, your bot won't be as intelligent as it could be um, using the cognitive services provided by Microsoft. So let's take a look how you actually building bots and how bots are actually working. So looking at the, the activity processing stack, it's nothing more than just, as I said, uh, a web app. So it's working with HTTP methods. For example, uh, if your user uh, posts a message like hi, the bot framework service receives the message and posts the message to the web server integration with an HTTP post method. And then there's a method called process activity, which forwards the message to your adapter, uh, to your turn context and to your middlewares if you have some. Uh, and bots are actually uh, working with the with the on turn method to signalize hey there's a new message in, uh, coming from your users to your bot and each ma each message is one turn so um, if the turn is finished the bot uh, logic actually sends the the message back to your user and so it goes back and forth uh, with HTTP post messages and HTTP 200 uh, responses um, and if you want to manipulate the incoming or outgoing messages you can make use of a concept called middleware as I said earlier and the middleware are actually the, the service which uh, allow you to extend the SDK so it's a uniform concept across all the platforms you, you can make use of out there so uh, C Sharp, JavaScript, Python and Java, all, all, all of them let you uh, build your own uh, middlewares um, and it's for annotating, processing and transforming activities. So like, the, like in this example, uh, if you want to add telemetry to your bot with for example Azure App Insights, you can just write a, a middleware which you can see uh, down on the left here for logging each incoming message um, to your app insight service so each message which comes in or even you can you can write a middleware which uh, manipulates even incoming and outgoing messages so messages coming from your users to your bot and messages coming from your bot to your users um, you can also um, lock them to the to the app insights service to have like a, a uh, an external logging system to uh, trace um, conversations um, afterwards. So basically it's just uh, the main line is uh, options.middleware.add where you add your middleware um, to your bot and each time as you can see on the right each time a new request comes in your um, your bot actually uh, handles up the middleware stack so it goes through the first middleware then the message is passed to the, to the second middleware um, then if there's no other middleware the, 
the message is passed to your uh, bot logic uh, and then the bot logic um, handles the rest and if the bot logic is finished then it goes back to the second middleware the second middleware could transform the, the outgoing message passes it on to the first middleware first middleware does, does some some more uh, logic and then the, the actual response is uh, given back to your user so um, middleware is basically the thing to transform activities or messages uh, and one one middleware I like to use um, is the translation middleware so I'd like to use uh, um, uh, the Bing tra text translator for translating incoming and outgoing messages to have a multilingual bot so imagine this you have like a Q&A make knowledge base where your question and answer pairs are stored in English but you want to have uh, or you want to give your users the ability to talk or, or write with your bot in German, French, Spanish, Italian, whatever language as well, even though the question and answer pairs are only uh, available in English. So you can use the Bing Text Translator as a, as a middleware to take the input coming from the user in, for example, German, translating it in, into English, then going to the Q&A maker knowledge base, uh, looking up the question in, in English, uh, getting the result uh, the, as an answer in English, um, giving the answer back to the, to the middleware for translating it into German as well, and then answering the user in German with the exact same answer which is populated in the Q&A maker knowledge base uh, in English. So uh, with this scenario, you can easily build multilingual bots in the Bing Text Translator uh, supports up to 70 languages for translation. So uh, it's like uh, an easy approach um, with 10 or 15 lines of code to have a multilingual bot setup. So if you want to have like more examples for middleware, um, visit github.com slash Microsoft slash bot builder minus samples. There are a lot of uh, middleware samples out there as well. Um, for manipulating or transforming the activity stack. But enough uh, 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 of the concepts and patterns, let's go and talk about how to build a bot actually. And Microsoft has come up with a, with a six step approach. So first of all, you have to plan your bot, um, your bot architecture, review the bot design guidelines, which are out there and provided you by Microsoft um, and so on. Then you go to the build phase where you're actually building your bots, you're writing code, you're integrating cognitive services. When you're done with building, you're going to the test phase where you're testing uh, with the emulator uh, or with the web chat, uh, which is uh, available in the Azure portal. And when you say, okay, my bot is ready to be deployed, you publish your bot to Azure, use continuous deployment um, tools like uh, Azure DevOps um, to have a CI CD pipeline for your bot. Um, then you connect your bot to the various channels. And last but not least, um, the most important one is to evaluate, evaluate um, your bot. Uh, view the analytics, check out what's what, what could be improved because uh, if you're not building bots which are not be actually used, you're not building bots because that, that doesn't make sense if you just hit and run, uh, do the hit and run approach um, because it's about continuously improving your, your um, bot and uh, the tools um, behind your bot. Um, and the life cycle of a typical bot project could look like, could look like this. So. As I said, you have your various phases. In the plan phase, you author the dialogues, you design the cards. Um, there's a there's a tool um, which is called Chatdown, where you can actually do uh, transcript mockups. So um, you could just mock up your conversations, um, visualize them within the um, uh, bot framework emulator. Um, to see if the cards uh, render exactly how you want to render them, uh, if they look good, if images are, are looking good, if the text is um, looking good and so on. And if, you've, if you're done with your mockups, you actually go 
uh, and build your bot, you're utilizing the SDKs, you're integrating the cognitive services for the various use cases like uh, language understanding, translation, uh, Q&A maker and so on. Um, and you can also use the getting started templates um, to have like a quick start guide on how to use the SDKs. Um, if you're done with building, you're going to the testing phase with the emulator where you can test your, your bot locally. You don't have to deploy anything uh, to Azure at that stage. Um, you can use App Insights to test your bot, to analyze your bot, um, and you can also um, get the transcripts from your bot, save them somewhere to compare um, various use cases or various phases within your build cycle. Um, if you're done with testing, you're going to publish your bot either via the DevOps tools or um, you can also publish your bot to Azure only to have your code running in Azure only. Um, or you can bring your own web host. You can host your bot uh, anywhere, as I said, uh, on premises in your data center and just connect um, with the Azure bot channel registration service to being able to publish it to your channels, which is the next stage the connect phase where you connect your bot to the various channels like a web chat, like Cortana, like Facebook, Skype, Teams, or build your own connector via direct line to actually um, connect to your third party service. And then uh, you need to evaluate your bot regularly, continuously improve it. Um, uh, monitor it with App Insights, check the logs, um, check out what, for example, the language understanding uh, intelligence service Louis tells you about suggestions, um, improve your language models, improve your Q&A maker knowledge base with active learning and so on um, to uh, increase your user adoption by time as well. So uh, next up, I'm going to talk about some of those phases uh, or tools which you can use in detail. Like for the testing phase, I want to introduce you to the Bot Framework Emulator. Um, the Bot Framework Emulator, as I said, it's an open source cross-platform cross application. So you can use it on the Mac, on Windows and on Linux. Um, you can use it for testing and debugging your conversational application. Um, and you can use it for your local bots. So if you have like a bot um, which you're uh, developing with Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code or any other IDE um, and you, had, you hit the 5 or you run npm start, um, you can use the bot framework emulator to just, just test your local bot which is um, serving a local uh, web server or if your bot is actually just running in Azure, for example, you can connect your bot framework emulator, which is um, running your, on your machine, to the Azure uh, bot service to uh, debug your, your uh, Azure hosted bots as well on your machine. Um, you can inspect responses from your bots, integrated services like Lewis and QA Maker to see what's happening there. Uh, you can play back transcripts, which you uh, can actually uh, create with a tool called uh, Chatdown, as I said earlier, which is a CLI tool. Um, so that's, it's a pretty, pretty cool and pretty impressive uh, tool you can, you can use. Uh, and the team is, is doing a great job um, uh, on building the bot framework emulator and even increasing it uh, more over time as well. Um, if, you, if you're not familiar with the Azure Bot service um, and you need a quick start guide, uh, you don't have to start uh, with a blank bot because um, the, the Microsoft Bot Framework team has come up with some templates and with some solutions over time to make it easier um, uh, to get started with building bots. So they've come up with, with a lot of templates like a basic template which integrates some of the best practices out there. They have come up with an enterprise uh, template, which is a full-fledged template, um, which also um, brings some middlewares with it. Um, you have language understanding middlewares, you have like translation middlewares and so on. You have logging middlewares. Um, so you basically have a full-blown bot out there. You just have to 
um, connect your cognitive services to your bot and you're good to go. Um, and they have also come up with some solutions um, which are basically just more than one bot. Um, it's a real use case uh, behind that. So they have a virtual assistant solution which you can use and um, there's a customer support solution which is coming soon um, which is basically um, the, the use case for uh, customer service desk um, handled with a bot. Um, so if you're not uh, not at a real dev or you just um, want to get started with the Microsoft bot framework just check out the templates and solutions um, which are a pretty good uh, quick start guide on how to build bots and you don't have to start from scratch. Um, if you're building actually uh, the, the bot itself, you have to make sure to use various conversational mechanisms. So don't do a text only bot, at least uh, if your use case is not uh, dependent on text only. Um, of course, Text is a is a is a main um, a main uh, pattern with your within your bots uh, conversations, but also make sure to add images, add videos, add audio and, and file support as well, because your users are used to work with images. Um, they may be used to work with emojis. Your bot maybe need to uh, understand emojis as well. Um, and give your users uh, input hints with suggested actions like buttons, numbered items in the list and so on um, to uh, narrow down the actual, um, the actual conversation options they have. Also make sure to work with cards because cards are uh, an easy and beautiful approach to um, integrate text, images, buttons and so on with one uh, rendering object. Um, you can also work with audio cards, you can work with uh, video cards, you can have cards for signing in uh, to do authentication. There are a lot of card types out there like hero cards, audio cards, uh, thumbnail cards, adaptive cards as I said, um, which render in each uh, channel natively so you don't have to build your whole uh, uh, GUI if you will uh, for each channel separately but you can make use of adaptive cards uh, to render your um, your uh, media attachments within the channel natively and of course uh, if it's if if it's um, uh, good for your use case at speech support so at uh, speech recognition at text to speech or speech to text to your bot uh, dependent on your language as well because speech uh, may not be uh, available for all the languages which are out there. It works good for English for example um, but it doesn't work that well for German uh, for example or at least for, for uh, Austrian German. Um, so make sure to test that extensively before you actually uh, hit the production um, status uh, with the speech service because um, if the, the bot is not capable of understanding your users, uh, your user adoption will decrease and this is something you don't want to have. So make sure your bot is working correctly and your bot is understanding the user's in inputs uh, no matter if they're text bound or speech bound um, because this is the thing your users will remember uh, and this is the criteria your users will measure your bot on. Also, um, as I said earlier, you don't have to start from blank. So there are a lot of templates and solutions out there. One of them, as I said, is the virtual assistant. And the virtual assistant is basically uh, your brand or your personality, if you will. Um, uh, so it basically combines a lot of AI capabilities like speech, Q&A, language understanding, vision. Um, and it uses the Azure bot service to, first of all, give your users various input types like tap, typing, speaking, working with adaptive cards. Um, the Azure bot service itself is uh, capable of connecting to various services as I said, uh, Microsoft ones and non-Microsoft ones. Um, it also is able 
of uh, handling um, or being deployed to various devices. So it's not only on your smartphone or on your laptop, but it could be also uh, within your smart home. Uh, some car vendors are also integrating um, the, the Microsoft AI services into their cars um, to have like a, a more uh, interactive uh, car handling system. Uh, and your bot actually, um, if you will, can also uh, be deployed to your coffee making machine or whatever. Um, so basically you could just have a conversation with your coffee maker and say, hey, uh, I want an espresso, please uh, make me an espresso in five minutes when I'm downstairs and your coffee maker will make you an espresso in five minutes as it will understand um, what you're actually talking. So this could be one use case. So it's not only about your uh, devices which are you using right now within the IT uh, ecosystem, the smartphones and tablets and stuff like that, but your bot can also be um, deployed to various uh, devices and variables as well. And of course, um, you want to integrate various knowledge sources. So um, you maybe have like data sources uh, in SQL databases, uh, you have manuals, uh, you have general knowledge and they're deployed within your organization and various data silos and with services like the Q&A maker, you just can combine those data silos into one single endpoint, um, which is basically um, the, the single endpoint for your bot to, to reach out to if there's if a question is arising. Uh, and the Q&A maker then uh, is capable of, of uh, answering the questions. And the virtual assistant also uh, consists of various uh, conversation skills. So there are a lot of out there which are pre-built, pre like mail, like a skill for tasks, for a calendar, for automotive and stuff like that. But you can also build your own skills. Um, so you can build your own skills and integrate um, your APIs first or for third party products uh, as well into your bot to make, a, make it even better and um, make the, the user interaction even richer. And of course, you can have a scenario where you can integrate your bot uh, with other bots as well. So uh, you can you can do a master subordinate um, bot service where your bot is talking to another bot. If if your bot is not uh, capable of doing what the the user is actually um, uh, demanding the bot of, so there's even a bot to bot uh, scenario out there. And of course. Um, you can have it uh, running on your uh, on your edge as well. So the AI capabilities are basically at the heart of the bot, as I said earlier. So what does Microsoft offer for adding intelligence? Um, basically, they came up with something called the Azure Cognitive Services, which is a set of APIs uh, categorized in, in various ideas uh, areas. For example, for speech, you have speech to text, text to speech, speech translation, speaker recognition. Um, for language, you have language understanding, you have a spell checker uh, powered by Bing, you have a translator for text, you have text analytics. Uh, for vision, you have various services you can make use of. Um, for search, you have a lot of Bing search APIs you can use. And for Q&A maker, um, you have uh, or for knowledge management, you have the Q&A maker service, um, which we'll see later on in the demo as well, um, which you can use um, to um, aggregate or distill information into an easy to navigate FAQ. So I'd like to switch over to, to my uh, demo. Um, the demo is about uh, building a bot um, with zero code uh, and I want to show you how, how easy it is to build a bot um, with the tools which are out there. So uh, I'm here at the Q&A maker.ai website, which is the website uh, for knowledge management. So if you have an Azure subscription, just go to uh, www.qnamaker.ai, log in uh, and create a knowledge base. I already created one. Um, 
and if the stuff is loading I want to add some question and answer pairs into my Q&A maker knowledge base so I'm going to navigate to my Q&A maker knowledge base and here I have a URL from the Azure bot service FAQ um, which is out there on docs Microsoft com and I want to automatically uh, grab that uh, FAQ and import it into my knowledge base so basically on the settings page or on your um, creation page you can insert a URL um, add it into your uh, knowledge base and if you if you edit it um, you just hit save and train and this will take a while while it's saving it's basically uh, building up a new knowledge base model and it's updating the knowledge base with the changes I made um, and if it's done we're basically uh, be seeing the updated knowledge base and we can ask some questions which are um, standing in the FAQ on the Azure bot service docs com Microsoft com site so let's check that out go back to the edit page and as you can see right there we got a lot of questions like what is the v4 SDK uh, what happens to my bot written to rest and stuff like that which is basically just the thing we see up here um, which gets extracted by the QA maker service so we are ready to publish our knowledge base we got some chit chat in there as well uh, so we are gonna publish the knowledge base right now um, so publishing means it's creating an endpoint for our bot um, to be able to be used uh, and if it's published we can say from the Q&A maker uh, portal create bot and what this will be doing it's be it's being open uh, the Azure portal for us uh, it's filling out some stuff at, uh, up there uh, like resource groups and stuff like that location and what's cool about it is we can use either the C-sharp or the Node.js version um, no matter which uh, programming language you want to use just the GA ones uh, it's creating a, stuff, a bunch of stuff up there so we're gonna hit create and after some seconds um, our bot should be created so we go to our resource um, and the first thing we're doing is to test it and we had one question which was like what is the v4 SDK we're asking that question and it should give us back the answer coming from the Q&A maker knowledge base so we see um, the bot framework v4 SDK builds on the feedback and learnings etc uh, etc et and let's check that out what is the v4 SDK it's built on feedback and learnings from the prior etc etc so it's the same question um, coming from the docs article um, being extracted by the Q&A maker knowledge base automatically uh, and with zero code we will be we were able to build a bot which is capable of doing uh, question and answer uh, matching um, provided by the Microsoft bot framework and the Azure bot service so right now what we could do as well we could go to uh, build the build tab right here open online code editor um, and just tweak the code up there um, to integrate uh, more cognitive services um, to have a greeting uh, dialogue integrated as well so um, we can just uh, tweak the code to to fit our needs as well or if you want to do it locally with Visual Studio Code or with Visual Studio you could just hit download bot source code and it will get you all the source code out there you can uh, manipulate or develop or enhance your bot locally and just upload your changes to, to Azure as well or build a bot, uh, Azure DevOps CI CD pipeline which pushes your code automatically to the Azure repo as well so we've built a bot in less than five minutes which is capable of doing a uh, question and answer uh, matching with the Q&A maker a knowledge base service so that's pretty decent isn't it um, 
as some folks in the in the SharePoint Dev ecosystem I like to say, uh, sharing is caring. Um, the community-driven bot extensions uh, are provided by a project called Bot Builder Community, where I'm a part uh, of. Thanks to Gary Pretty, James Mann, uh, Arafat Tezen, and Michael Schul, um, we're doing some some stuff uh, or releasing some stuff which is uh, not done by Microsoft. So we're extending the core SDKs with middlewares, with dialogues and help us. So if you wanna um, get a get a, an idea of what we're doing, just check out github.com slash botbuilder community. Um, and if you have any any feedback or enhancements or ideas, just do a pull request and we're happy to, to have you on board as well. So that was about it. Um, if you want to have a quick start guide, just visit uh, aka.ms slash botframeworkdocs for the getting, st getting started guides. Um, check out github.com slash microsoft slash botbuilder uh, or check out the tools and samples uh, out there on github. Um, also check out um, bit.ly slash learn underscore two underscore bot because this is the URL you have to remember um, where all the cool samples uh, and other resources are, are linked. So check that out. Um, if you have any questions, uh, reach out to me uh, on Twitter at cloudguy underscore pro uh, or visit my blog at uh, www.cloudguy.pro uh, for more. Uh, I have a lot, of, a lot of blog posts out there. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me, contact me on Twitter, add me on LinkedIn. Uh, uh, I'm happy to assist you. I'm happy to answer your questions. Um, so hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out to me. Thanks and have a great rest of the day and uh, enjoy the, the rest of the Azure Bootcamp uh, sessions online.